These days, millions of football fans all over the world are watching the World Cup live on TV. Each goal, each foul. Sharing the joy and the pain. And all thanks to communication satellites thousands of kilometers above our heads. If somebody scores a goal in Johannesburg, before we can see it in Madrid, the signal will have to travel to the satellite 36,000 kilometers and back again. This takes 250 milliseconds. Even with encoders processing the pictures, the viewer at home is just a few seconds behind the real action. We've certainly come a long way since the first broadcasts in the 1920s. In 2008, there were more than 100 million European homes receiving TV programs transmitted by satellites. Today we are talking about satellites of the five, six, seven thousand kilos with 50 to 100 channels where you can put in a single satellite probably 500 television programs. And all together in space at the moment there are about 300 satellites in the year stationary orbit, 36,000 kilometers over the equator. And on those 300 uh, satellites there are 25,000 programs. But how does it exactly work? To find some answers, we move to the French Riviera. This clean room in Cannes is where a quarter of the world's telecom satellites are made. The central component is a carbon fiber tube on which the rest of the satellite is built. Once ready, the satellite is carefully wrapped in a protective material that will allow it to endure not only the harsh trip to space, but also the extreme temperatures and the potentially damaging sunlight once in its final orbit. Once in the geostationary orbit, satellites are supposed to move synchronically with the Earth, so antennas can point in a fixed direction and maintain a link with the satellite. But the physical forces of space constantly push and pull them in different directions, obliging engineers back on Earth to adjust their path regularly. Recognizing the importance of assisting in the development of new technologies, the European Space Agency is supporting crucial advances in the broadcasting and reception of TV images. Here in the Netherlands, ESA engineers are busy developing the television of tomorrow. So human beings have two eyes, therefore we need two pictures, one for the left eye, one for the right eye. We send both pictures up to the satellite, they come down to the television, and the television shows them merged. But when you put on the glasses, you get the 3D wow effect. At the moment, the two parallel images are sent up to space on one HD channel. But ESA is exploring other technical solutions that could help set the European standard for 3D TV. What's very important is to be able to optimise the bandwidth that we use from the satellite. The satellite's an extremely scarce resource, so we want to be sure that we're optimising every last bit that we can get from our satellites. 3D TV, interactive TV, on-demand TV, you name it. The television of the future is only a click away. The future of television is up in space.